Good morning, guys. Monday morning again. So back to the grind. And actually, for me, it really is back to the grind tomorrow. I'm actually going to <laughs> come out of my short hiatus here for about six weeks, and hopefully my head's back in the game. Uh, start with a couple things, or start with something real quick. Uh, I had, for those of you that didn't see it yesterday, okay, apparently a bunch of you did, uh, we've had about 80 people RSVP for the October 16th get-together so far. <clears throat> if you are planning on coming, please send me an email with the names of everybody that is coming, okay, if you're bringing your wife, I need her name too, uh, kids, at least tell me how many kids. I don't necessarily need their names or anything like that. Uh, but any adults, somebody who's going to have ID, uh, need to have their names. Uh, and where you're coming from. Uh, reason being is we are going to check ID at the door uh, to make sure that we don't have any nefarious people coming in. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so please send me that as soon as you can. Uh, cause we are limited to how many people and if we have more people that want to come, then we've got space. I got to figure something out. So, okay. Topic of today, uh, is the U S beyond repair? A couple of scary pieces of information that I saw yesterday. And yes, it is actually Monday morning here, guys. It's about quarter to seven. Uh, 41% of the United States now wants to become a socialist country. That's scary as hell. Here's even a better one for you. 65% of Democrats, okay, which is probably making up the majority of that 41%, view censorship as a good thing, okay, that they want misinformation taken off the internet. Now, here's my question on this one. Who's going to decide what is misinformation and what is not? Google? CNN? Are we going to have a new misinformation department of the U.S. government? Okay. You know, misinformation is kind of... A hard, it, it, it's politically oriented, okay? Misinformation, okay? We've heard tons about that on COVID, okay? Some of the misinformation that was originally misinformation turned out to be true. Uh, how about climate change? I mean, climate change is a hoax, yet they're going to say that's completely true. You know, so they're, who's going to control that? You know, that's going to be the interesting part. And my bet is it will be, politically motivated. Well, this is where I come to the point of saying, are we beyond repair? Now, if you think about it, with 45, he was impeached twice. Why? Not because of anything that he actually did, but because it was politically motivated. Okay, No impeachment came through for the first two years when he held both houses of Congress, but God knows when the opposite party got in, Impeachment started going crazy, and we'll just make up a bunch of stories, which kind of goes back to the misinformation part. But, you know, let's talk about Russia collusion and misinformation. Well, right now, 46 has both houses of Congress. Okay? And even though, I think it was Marjorie Taylor Greene put up articles of impeachment to the House, never went anywhere the day after Biden was elected, uh, selected, and now they're talking about it again. Will it go anywhere? Of course not, okay, because there's no way the Democrats are even going to bring it to a vote. But let's say in 2022, Congress flips, which by all estimates, that's what's going to happen, okay? So Congress is going to flip. So then what do you have? You have impeachment rammed through again, okay? You know it's going to happen. And what would that get us? You know, we've all talked many times. It's like, okay, Joe's a bumbling buffoon, but 
Kamala Harris is completely in over her head. I mean, she's five foot tall standing in 15 feet of water. Uh, I mean, she's way over her head. So let's say they get rid of both of them. That would be the only way then to move in somebody from whoever the speaker would be at that point into the White House. But of course, that would be short-lived because it would take some time to get rid of 46. It would take some time to get rid of Harris. And then what? You have six months of the, the speaker being the president before we have another election. That's where we get to a point of now we start to look like some <clears throat> banana republic, some third world country. I mean, can you imagine if we went through three leaders in two years? Okay. <clears throat> that is crazy. Now, this is also why I have a... The, the, there's got to be something that's going to bring the country together. Okay. We are diametrically opposite. I mean, go back to the days of Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill, okay? You know, if you all remember who Tip O'Neill was, Speaker of the House, uh, Democrat, you know, during part of Reagan's presidency. And they managed to get things done. There was this little thing called compromise that has been done in our pol political system for the last 250 years. In the last five, it's I'd say maybe the last 12, uh, that's completely gone out the window. It's just a witch hunt from either side. They care less about the people. All they care about is power. We all know that. What's it going to take to figure out what happens from here? All right. Does the country all come back together? The only, th the only thing that's going to bring the country all together is one again is a war. And I think the politicians know that. Okay? So that's why they are hoping for some, I truly believe that, hoping for something between China and the U.S. I believe that they are hoping for a war. S cooler heads are going to prevail. And so this is where you get the ideas of secession and balkanization, which, again, what that's going to take is a civil war or a revolutionary war, whichever one you want to call it, okay? Revolutionary, I guess, would be on political basis, and a civil war would be more on a racial basis. That's kind of where we're heading, and that's what I see as... The, the politicians, domestically and internationally, kind of counting on. All right? We talk about the uh, depopulation agenda all the time. What better way to depopulate the world than to have another war? Okay? Look at how many people died during World War, uh, World War II. You know, I mean, you were talking about tens of millions, if not over 100 million people died. Okay, I mean, there's obviously no accurate count. This is kind of what we've got to prepare for, guys. What is going to happen? How are you going to come out the other side? If the war is all on foreign soil, maybe it looks like it's World War II again, and everybody just buckles down. We have shortages on rubber. We have shortages on metals. We have shortages on food, and everybody's growing victory gardens. If it's, if it's on U.S. soil, which this time I have a feeling it could be, okay? Everybody mentions the movie Red Dawn all the time. What happens in that sort of scenario? Where are you going to be? Where are you going to go? Everybody on here lives somewhere differently. City, country, suburbs, way out in the boonies, you know, uh, you know, an hour from anybody else. Some people are going to have greater advantages. Some people can hide very well. Other people are going to be ground zero. Pay attention to what's going on in the world. It's, it's a little bigger than just the politics. There's definitely stuff going on in the background that we all try to watch, but obviously aren't privy to most of it. So... Yeah, if that all happens, guys, 
all bets are off. Who knows what happens? So, yeah, a little solid this morning. Have a good one. Pin a ball out.